Mr. Speaker, we were elected to be representatives, to represent our districts, to represent our constituents, to listen and to respond. Mr. Speaker, I've been listening. I've been listening to phone calls. I've been reading emails. I've been hearing what my constituents have to say. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, they are deeply concerned. They're, they're concerned with the direction of our country. Yes, they're concerned with a body that can't seem to come together. They can't seem to listen to each other. One of them wrote me just today, said, I've watched with great interest the ongoing debate between the House and the Senate regarding the federal health care law. Quite frankly, I was of the opinion that an absolute stand by the House of Representatives to defund Obamacare was an inappropriate step as compared to less drastic measures. However, in the mail today, I received a 92 percent proposed increase from Blue Cross Blue Shield for our current plan for 2014. The explanation of the increase all boiled down to the changes in the insurance markets required as a result of the full implementation of Obamacare. You can easily understand why we are astounded that this is the best health care direction that our country can embark upon. I encourage you to take whatever opportunities come your way to stop this disaster that is looming. The financial impact on people who are not a drain on the government will be immense. Here's another one, Mr. Speaker. I just received a letter from Blue Cross Blue Shield informing me that my current coverage has been outlawed by Obamacare and the premium for my family will increase by 400%. If I switch to a legal coverage option, this increase is over $9,000 a year. I don't care if you have to risk shutting down the government or defaulting on the debt. It is just postponing the inevitable default of Obamacare is allowed to exist. Well, Mr. Speaker, we're not here because we want to shut down the government. We've made every effort possible. We have gone at great lengths the extra mile to the other side to present to them alternatives, to present to them ways that we could come together and agree. We had three proposals there on the table. Now we've offered to go and sit down and talk. That's what our body does. When we come to disagreements between the House and the Senate, we, our formal uh, agreement is to come and we meet. We confer. We bring in negotiators. We talk. We try to reason this out. We do this in our families, don't we? And that's what's done in this body on a normal course of business. However, Mr. Speaker, in our efforts of trying to bring resolution and sound reasoning to this process, we can't get a response. They say, no, we don't, we don't want to talk to you. We don't want to reason to you. We don't want to hear what your constituents are saying. We don't want to hear the problems. We just want to ram this through. Where is that in a representative government? Where is that in being responsive to the American people. Mr. Speaker, if we really want good policy, and I have to believe that my colleagues on the other side of the aisle truly want good policy, then we need to take politics out of this. We need to take self-service out of this. We need to come together like adults and sit down and talk this through and come up with a reasonable solution that would bring the best outcome for the American people. That's what our hope is. We invite still today the leadership of the Senate to come and to sit down in the conference with us, to negotiate with us, to lay out their concerns and their thoughts. Let's be adults. Let's do the right thing for the American people. Thank you.